kind of the, I guess, theme of the presentation is, is breaking down, you know, the barrier between OpenStreetMap and Esri. Um, the things I'm going to talk about, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to do two things. One is bring OpenStreetMap content into our sort of ecosystem of software so that we can take advantage of it and our users can take advantage of it. But then also provide tools and, and technologies that the greater OSM community can also take advantage of, and actually the greater mapping community, for that matter, not just specific to OpenStreetMap. So I'm going to quickly go through some things that we've been working on for some of them for several years, actually, uh, and then I'll, I'll demo kind of the last, the new stuff that we're working on. Um, real quick, Jessica, my, my colleague that's here on Friday, she gave a talk about the OSM base map, uh, or actually, no, sorry, the. Uh, uh, yeah, never mind. That's down. That's down further. <laughs> First, the uh, OSM base map at ArcGIS Online. So, we have for a number of years have made the OpenStreetMap raster tiled base map available as a, an option in our base map gallery. I'll kind of point that out in a minute when I when I get into my demo. Uh, we also use OSM data in our base map. So, we've got probably ten to twelve uh, custom, you know, fully in-house base maps that we supplement with OSM data where our commercial data providers aren't as good, you know, and obviously developing parts of the world, a lot of times in Africa, OSM is, is the best data source. So we'll, we'll fill in with that where, um, where it works. And if you look, anytime you see one of our kind of web map viewers, uh, we'll have credit notes at the bottom. So anytime you see OpenStreetMap contributors in there, some of the data that you're looking at came from OpenStreetMap and it changes dynamically based on, you know, where you are. The ArcGIS editor for OpenStreetMap, this is a, kind of a legacy product. It's a free extension for ArcMap, which is our sort of legacy desktop software. And basically it lets you extract uh, OpenStreetMap data from the main OSM database, puts it into a file geodatabase, which is one of our proprietary file formats, and you can end it there. You can you know, use it for your own mapping or analysis in our software, or you can edit it and push those edits back up to OpenStreetMap. So, yeah, it's, like I said, kind of legacy. It's sort of just being maintained right now. Uh, City Engine is basically our, our 3D, you know, scene construction software. Uh, so it's been used in a handful of, like, Disney movies, Pixar movies to create the three-dimensional, you know, city views that you see. Uh, it has, I guess you could call it a plug-in. It's, it's integrated into the software, though. So you can pull down OpenStreetMap building footprints and just extrude them based on building height on the fly. So it's really easy. I don't have time to demo it, but it's basically just drawing an extent and footprints appear. So it's pretty cool. So that's what we've been doing for the last several years. Um, some of the newer stuff, we talked about this last year actually at OpenStreet, at the uh, State of the Map US, and it's still a little bit ongoing. Um, so we did uh, two things to extend ID, which is, if you don't know, that's the you know, main web editor everybody uses. So first we got legal permission to include our imagery base maps in ID as reference layers. So it took like literally two and a half years of legal wrangling with our, our lawyers. And then really not so much that, really it's with our data providers to come to agreements that may allowed us to do that. Um, so if you go in there, look at the background layers, you'll see two Esri imagery based maps. Uh, the second thing that is still ongoing is we have a pull request to let you bring in geo services and basically automatically bring in features from your service into ID instead of having to manually digitize them. So if you have building footprints of an entire city, you already have it created rather than going, and you want to get it into OpenStreetMap, rather than going in there and manually drawing each one, you, know, you already have the data, this would allow you to publish it as a service, point to that endpoint in ID, the geometries get placed on the map, you can map the attributes in your data to tags in OpenStreetMap, and then just kind of manually approve one at a time and then push those edits up. So it's not really batch editing, it's like batch digitizing. It's sort of automated for you. So that's pretty cool. I don't really have time to demo it, but yeah, like I said, it's an ongoing kind of, uh, you know, pull request. It, it's, there's still some work that needs to be done. So hopefully we're, we're, we're hoping we can wrap it up uh, pretty soon. So the newest thing is our database mirror that we've been, we've been working with. So probably about the last eight to nine months, uh, we've been working on this. We have a, Postgres database hopen, hosted in Amazon that is an exact replica of the main OSM database. And we sync it with the main OSM database every minute. So it's about usually two minutes or less behind the main database. Um, and I'll get more into detail on that and demo it in a little bit, but that's, yeah, just, just get that concept for now. 
Um, so the two things that have come out of that, this is the vector tile base map that I started to talk about earlier. Uh, so we created a, our own vector tile base map from that same database. Um, Jessica, my, my colleague, gave a, gave a talk about that. So for now, we've just mimicked the core OSM base map style, um, but we have a, a interactive style editor, so the plan is to make multiple styles of our own and then put that base map with the style editor out to the public and then you can make your own custom style. So you basically take the OSM base map and restyle it in a web browser. Um, and the last thing, which is really kind of what I'm going to focus on, is dynamic map services. So because this is our database, we have control over it, we can kind of you know, do what we want with it. Um, so we're able to publish dynamic services that aren't tiled, so you can actually interact with the data, do analysis, which again, you know, I talked about those patterns of use. Analysis is a real big one um, for obviously our customers, but then a lot of, a lot of you know, mappers in general. Uh, so I think, hopefully this works. Here's where, the, here's where the presentation gets risky. It's all gonna be live demos now. Uh, hang on a sec. So this is ArcGIS Online. Um, again, I'm not gonna get really into it, just kind of understand this is, this is our web platform, this is our web map viewer. And right now we're looking at this dark gray base map is one of our base maps. The light gray footprints, this is every building footprint in OpenStreetMap being dynamically drawn, rendered on the client from our mirror of the database. So as people right now are editing building footprints, and I mean, this is LA, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty filled out, but as people are adding building footprints in right now all over the world, they're showing up in this service in about two minutes. So to kind of illustrate sort of more what I mean when, I'm, when I talk about it being dynamic, I can come in here because it's not tiled, just change the symbology. Uh, I can query. So there's not a whole lot of attributes on a lot of building footprints, not a lot of tags, I should say, on a lot of building footprints. But I think this is Staples Center. And anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, there's Staples Center. So we have some other layers too. These are, so, so I guess I should explain. The layers you're looking at are basically query layers that we've defined. Using, our, using the tags in our database. So for like the buildings, it's real simple. It's just like select star from polygon where building is not null, so it's any kind of building. Um, and then you know, kind of the same thing for parks. We also have roads. Um, and I think the cool thing is, you know, this is again, all dynamically drawn and it's actually pretty performant. This is still something we're working on obviously, but um, you know, we're not drawing from any kind of tile. So I'm gonna jump, this is you know, a pretty, pretty filled out area here in LA. I'm gonna go to somewhere that's not so filled out. This is Redlands, California. This is where the headquarters of Esri is located. And I'm gonna zoom in to my neighborhood. Wi-Fi is a little slow. But, so I'm gonna switch to the OpenStreetMap base map. So you can obviously see <coughs> our building footprints right now match what's in the OSM base map. But I'm gonna go over to the ID editor and we'll find a good spot here. Mm. Okay, so bear, bear with me here one second. I'm going to, on my little touchpad. So this is just straight out of the box, you know, normal ID that everybody uses. So I'm gonna tag it as a house. And I don't know the address, but I know what street it's on. It's on Garfield Way. Redlands, okay. Hit save, I got a comment. 
and I'll upload. So basically, I just digitized this building in right here. So while that's kind of processing, I'm going to go in a little bit more detail about sort of what's actually happening. So <clears throat> I was just in one of the editing applications, ID, up at the top there. And I just pushed an edit into the OSM database just like everybody else does, you know, on a daily basis. So every minute, like I talked about, we're checking the Planet website for minutely diffs. We run a script like every, yeah, literally every minute. We check for the previous five minutes worth of diffs. If it falls behind a couple minutes, we'll catch back up, you know, up to five minutes at a time. Usually it takes like 30 seconds to fully download and ingest a minute's worth of diffs. Um, so we're using OSM to PG SQL and Osmosis to do that, which are kind of the standard tools for, for that, that workflow. The key part is the RDS PostgreSQL database down there at the bottom. So it's hosted in Amazon RDS. And we've got our Esri geodatabase repository laid down on top of that. And without going into a lot of detail, it basically is sort of our geodatabase technology that allows our software to do a bunch of stuff with a database. So um, that's kind of the key. It's, it's, ba it's, it's really a very similar to the main OSM database just with that layer on top of it. So then from there, we're using ArcGIS Pro, which is our new flagship desktop software product. And we're using what we call query layers. They're just SQL queries, uh, like I kind of talked about earlier, querying those tags uh, to get thematic layers, you know, like buildings and roads and parks, things like that. Uh, from there, we're, we're publishing to ArcGIS Server, which is our enterprise web service, you know, software. Um, there's a couple different ways we could do this, and, and we've got some future plans. But for now, it's, it's sort of on-premises ArcGIS Server. And then it's accessible to client applications. Um, and I should also mention, too, it's not just our client applications. It's, it's, these are RESTful services. So anything that can consume a REST service or that can query it and parse the JSON response, parse the geometries, um, you know, anybody can, can handle that. So well, it just appeared by itself. But there, so there's the building footprint I just digitized. So just to kind of, <laughs> all right, somebody, somebody likes it. Um, so yeah, I mean, just to sort of drive it home, I think everybody gets it. But I mean, that edit went from ID, main OSM database, down into our database, and then popped into our, because it's a dynamic service, it just shows up. Like once it's in that Postgres database, our service endpoint just, renders it. And then obviously you can see my, my attributes there that I put in. So one last thing. I don't think there's anybody after me, so I won't, I won't try to go over, but I'm also not going to worry about going over. <laughs> oh, and actually, you know what? Well, yeah, I don't, uh, I probably don't need to show it, but it typically takes a little while for, for building footprints to show up in the OSM base map. So for right now, we're actually ahead of the base map because that footprint hasn't been cooked into the tiles yet. So one last thing I want to show to just sort of emphasize the uh, analysis capability. So this is downtown Detroit, where we obviously are. And we'll do a little bit of analysis. So I have this POI layer. This is basically, if you're familiar, oh, it's already got something on it. One second. Okay, so POI layer. Um, if you're familiar with the OSM base map kind of cartography, there's a, a layer in there called amenity points. This is, this is basically that layer. Um, so because it's dynamic, you just saw me remove it, but I can add a filter. And in this case, I want to filter out only features that are classified as amenity bar in the feature field. The conference is over, so we need to know where the, where the densest concentration of bars in Detroit is, I think. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't apply it. Hang on. OK, so now we got a lot less data, a lot, lot easier to look at. So I won't go into a ton of detail with this option here, this analysis button. We have a, a handful of analysis operations that, that you can conduct inside our map viewer. Um, yeah, location stuff, data enrichment, where you can combine other data sources with your data. I'm just going to go to Analyze Patterns, Calculate Density. So I'm pointing to my POI layer. I'll leave everything default for now. And hopefully I haven't used that name. I'll run the analysis. So 
I think I talked about, or I did talk about how this is our, our cloud-hosted WebGIS platform. So what's happening right now is that that analysis job that I just requested got kicked to a hosted geoprocessing service. And it's crunching all the numbers. The output is going to render in the map. I'll be able to see it here. But it's actually being saved as an item in my content repository. So like if I... You know, these are all the OSM layer items in ArcGIS Online. So it'll, it'll be persisted. It's hosted in our platform. And give it a second here. So it looks like we're in a pretty dense area, I think. We're in good shape. Shouldn't have any trouble finding a bar. Uh, and then you can kind of, you know, change the symbology, make it, make it look a little bit nicer. Um, and so if I go, th this is the actual item page for that density surface that I just calculated. Uh, so like I mentioned, since it's a REST service, if you have a client that can consume a REST service, then you can use it as is. But you can also come in here if it's a public item and export it. So you can export, I don't know if you can read it, but export to shapefile, CSV, KML, Excel, FileG database, GeoJSON, and feature collection. So, um, you know, it's not just, it, it's useful for our clients, but it's not just usable by our clients. Um, yeah. So. I'm almost out of time, which is good. I'm out of slides as well. So yeah, kind of what's next? Um, more frequent vector tile updates. Right now, we're cooking the entire world every time we have an update. Like we're, we're changing the, the, the cartography every day, um, and so yeah, it's it's takes about a week to cook the full tile set, and we want to get that. There's some technological limitations right now. We can't do just deltas, we have to recook the whole world. So uh, once we're able to just retile areas where there's been change, then obviously we can do this a lot faster. I don't know how fast, I don't know if minutely is, is feasible, but um, as, as fast as we can. Uh, public access to the dynamic services. So the dynamic stuff I just showed, those layer items right now are not public. Um, and that's just because they're, they're really not ready for public consumption yet. Um, but that's, that's the goal with that, is to make that publicly accessible so that anybody can go there. If they just want building footprints for Detroit, they can just extract out building footprints for Detroit. And they're, you know, again, two minutes behind what's in the main OSM database. So one of the reasons, too, that we haven't made these publicly accessible is performance. Uh, they perform well, but we don't know how well they'll scale. So we haven't, and we haven't really pushed it at this point. Um, there's a lot of, if anybody's done any kind of OSM replication into a Postgres database, there's a ton of indexing that's real important. Um, it's in Amazon, so there's another moving piece to it. So it's, it's yeah, we just, we haven't spent a lot of time focused on specifically performance. So um, something we definitely need to do. Uh, last slide, if any feedback anybody has, we're always interested in hearing it, uh, positive or negative, anything, questions, you can email osmdev at esri.com. Uh, I'm on that alias, a couple other people. Uh, and then there's some links there to, to the things that I talked about. Um, yeah, I think the slides will be up on the website too, so don't worry about writing those down. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do we well, so the question is, do we support OSM building relations? We it's literally a copy of whatever's in OSM. So it's like there was a problem with the Great Lakes a few weeks ago or like a month ago where Lake Superior or Lake Michigan just disappeared. So it disappeared in our data. So it's, yeah, it's literally whatever is in OSM is in our database. It should be an exact mirror all the time. Um, I, offhand, I don't know. It's a good question. I haven't, I don't, we haven't specifically check that or tested it. I mean, the query that we're using for buildings is like, it's just a, it's a nuclear, you know, select all, like I said, select star from where building's not null. So uh, it should, there should be no reason why it wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I can't say for sure. Yep. Yeah, so I actually think that's, I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked that question. So what kind of account do you need to actually do what I just showed? So. At some point, when the, the, the base map is public, it's in beta, but it, it will be public. Um, so you'll be able to use that without any kind of account. The public layer or the uh, dynamic layers may be the same way. Um, 
so there's, there's a couple account options. ArcGIS Align is a subscription-based service. Uh, we do have two free options. You can do a trial account. I think it's like 60 or 90 days for free. Or we have a developer account, which is a permanent account that's totally free. Um, and it's credit-based, so you get a certain number of credits. And actually, if you look in your agenda, or your, for the conference, the book, um, somewhere in the back we have an ad, and there's a coupon code for like 1,000 free credits, which is pretty, it's a, it's a big chunk of credits. So the credits are what are used when you're doing like analysis, geocoding, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, let's give away some books, I guess. So there's like a mix of paper and cars. I'm going to try to be totally fair and impartial. The first one will be the WebGIS one. Tracy Tien. I have a feeling a lot of these people aren't going to be here. <laughs> Tracy, no? All right. Christopher Blue. <laughs> All right. Maybe I'll just, whoever can like run up here first gets it, I don't know. Ariel Simmons, Stefan. Oh, come on. Saikot, Basu, Facebook. <laughs> Allison Hoff. Hey, finally. <laughs> and since you came, I'll actually let you pick if you want cartography or web GIS. So now for WebGIS. Nachari Riley. Hey. First try. All right. Thank you.